It's crazy to think about how much the iPod and iTunes transformed the landscape of consumable media. I mean, people freaked out when Steve Jobs came on stage to introduce the iPod. I mean, I can only assume they freaked out. It's not like I was old enough to care. The iPod helped to popularize the personal MP3 player and lifted Apple to the status of ultimate hashtag trendy status. However, MP3 players themselves created a whole wave of hashtag not so trendy tech toys made to not so easy easily play your favorite media? Of course, we're not talking about the iDog. That is trend. We're talking about media players that basically tried to launch their own media platform. So let's take a look at some of the toys that were introduced to allow kids and later me to watch their favorite media on the go. But first, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. If you've been online at all over the past month or a few weeks or so, you know everybody is talking about Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a massive mobile RPG with awesome 3D graphics, hundreds of champions to collect in giant, giant boss battles. I mean, just look at this giant, giant dragon. Breathtaking. This game feels like a classical RPG, but with modern graphics. I mean, look at the details on these champions. Also, all of these impressive graphics come right from your phone. With a perfect rating on the Play Store and a massive update coming out soon, you might as well check out Raid Shadow Legends now. So click my link in the description to instantly get 50,000 silver and a free champion. Good luck, and I will see you there. Now, if you wanted to be the coolest jean jacket, bandana wearing, single color tracksuit, jogged puka shell wearing in the snow persona on the block, you had to own Hit Clips. Hit it! Coming at you right between the ears is Hit Clips music to get you grooving. Hit Clips were a line of personal music players created by Tiger Electronics. From personal clips, boom boxes, and FM radios, each player cost about $20 at release, which in today's dollars is about $20 just inflated. However, the real money makers were the music cartridges themselves, which held one song each. They retailed for about $3.99 briefly before hitting the bargain bids pretty hard, which is where I initially got mine. The idea is that you clip them to the player or to your backpack or to wherever. The base media player is kind of awful. It has this really hard earpiece and a super short cord and you can't plug in your own headphones. Also, when I unpackaged this, the foam piece that goes over the ear completely deteriorated like sand. Now, my collector's mindset told me to sweep this up and keep it due to its potential value, but I overcame that and threw it away. Also, because there's limited space on the cartridges themselves, they had to shorten the songs to a one minute mix. And now, while this was definitely annoying in 1999, in retrospect, it's actually kind of cool because that means there's an exclusive one minute mix of these songs that don't exist anywhere else besides the hit clips. For example, All Star, the meme song. Somebody. It only has the intro, two choruses, and then it ends. It doesn't ask you if you could spare some change for gas or even if you'd like to get away from this place. It just gets through it as quickly as possible. Of course, having two thirds of the song missing was marketed as a good thing. Breaks down like this, we clip, 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 and sample songs. It's only the groove. With hit clips, you cut out all the bad parts of the song so you have maximum jam time. Between 1999 and 2004, hit clips released around 50 songs. If you look at the library of hit clip songs, it's such a massive time capsule for the time. I mean, you have NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, Smash Mouth. It's only second to the Digimon movie soundtrack for the perfect time capsule of 1990s and 2000s music. The only thing hit clips are missing are some sick ska selections. From 2004 to 2005, the hit clip's life was extended by one year by becoming the hit clip disc, which was a circular shaped cartridge, but it was still a cartridge. These held about two minutes of a song. Holy sh! There were about 20 discs released before the brand finally ended. But music was one thing. Hit clips tried to get into a portable music market right as portable music was becoming more and more convenient. So the real MP3 MVPs were those trying to get a head start on portable video and TV shows on the go. TV shows on the go. Why just have your Game Boy Advance for games when it could also play video? 
Well, it wasn't ideal. GBA video was a line of gray Game Boy Advance cartridges, which held about 40 minutes of footage. So roughly two broadcast episodes of a TV show. Nintendo partnered with a third party company to produce cartridges with Nickelodeon, Disney, Cartoon Network, 4Kids, etc. Now to fit this content on the cartridge, these shows had to be compressed to all heck. They run at a lower frame rate, there's artifacting, and of course it has to play on the Game Boy Advance's lower resolution screen. Watching on the original Game Boy Advance is horrible. The lack of light and limited viewing angle is just horrendous. But watching on an ideal screen like the Micro or the SP really isn't too bad. The resolution and artifacting is bad, but TV animated shows aren't even really animated on every single frame. So the lowered frame rate here isn't too much of an issue, especially on a show like Sonic X, which just really only animates on every 50th frame or so. For reference, I shot this piece of footage recently, scaled it down and compressed it to kind of what the Game Boy Advance could handle. It looks like this. Now, while most shows were compressed to the resolution of the Game Boy Advance, there were also three feature length movies released on the Game Boy Advance, Shrek, Shrek 2, and Shark Tale. So we're currently at two out of two in terms of devices you can hear All Star on. These were outputted to three fourths the resolution of the Game Boy Advance screen and compressed to all heck. Also, it runs at about an average of eight frames per a second. It looks horrendous. I have the Shark Tale cartridge here, and let me tell you, this is no way to watch this Oscar-nominated classic. But to be fair, I don't think I could recommend a way to watch Oscar nominee Will Smith play the fish Oscar in this Oscar-nominated classic. Nintendo sold these from November 2004 to April 2007. Despite tons of people having a Game Boy Advance, it was quite a high cost. I mean, $20 for two episodes with horrible quality? And 2004 to 2007. Remember that because at the same time, Sony was selling videos for the PSP. Over here, we got the Chad PSP. Next to the virginity is a social construct Game Boy Advance. The PSP was released in December of 2004, and while it was really impressive in hindsight, Nintendo just dominated it with the Nintendo DS. However, PSP was going for a different crowd. It didn't just want to be a gaming device, but an all-in-one media device, even competing with the iPod, which released its video playing model in 2005. While the PSP also had games, a big feature of it were the UMD videos. The UMD was the PSP's media base. A small disc inside this weird plastic container. They broke. A lot. It was awful. The UMD movies were a main part of the console. They weren't an afterthought like GBA video. And while many of these devices only had a few dozen releases, UMD had backing from nearly every major studio from mid 2005 to late 2008. Hundreds of movies and a few shows were released for the UMD and the quality is pretty good. The UMD could hold about 1.8 gigabytes of content and its resolution was 480 by 272. For the PSP's size, it's a fairly good picture. A DVD is usually exported to 720 by 480 and that's for TV size screens. The compression is comparable to the kind of video file you'd get by buying a movie on iTunes at the time and it's certainly a better picture than the iPod had. But the iPod had the iDog, so check me but you could plug the PSP into an iDog, so I don't know what this information really means. However, UMD videos were the only thing about the PSP that's region locked. I own a Cherry Blossom Japanese PSP and most of my UMDs don't work on it. I've read online that Sony movies are supposed to work, but despite having a ton of Columbia and Sony Pictures films, the only ones that worked were Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon and Spider-Man 2002. And that's not even the one where he says pizza time, so what am I expected to do? I want my pizza now and I want my video now. Video now. You could watch your favorite shows on your own personal video disc player. I want my video now. I want my video now. Now. So here's the one which was marketed most aggressively. Alex, little rascal. Hey, is that my video now? Video now was developed by Hasbro and Tiger Electronics. Yes, the people who make those odd LCD watch games. Now imagine actually watching a TV show on one of those because that's how video now feels. The original player retailed for about $60 with the color model later retailing for about $75. The original player came with a demo disc that had SpongeBob's unequivocally best episode. 
band geeks. I have to admit, it's obviously not the ideal way of watching this like at all, but a cartoon like SpongeBob has very recognizable characters with very recognizable outlines. So watching it isn't actually the worst on the video now. I was able to get through it relatively harmlessly and had no trouble figuring out what was going on. The original video now only featured content in black and white and on a super low resolution LCD screen. It was about 80 by 80 pixels with only 16 colors of gray being able to be displayed. That may sound abysmal, but that's only because it is. While SpongeBob is bearable, the Shark Week collection is not. Between the lack of shades, resolution, and dark nature of shooting footage underwater, this is a horrible way to watch a nature documentary. I can't even see their silly little faces. While GBA video was definitely held back by its high cost, video now was pretty successful. With the first model selling over a million units and over four million discs in the first year. That definitely was helped by its price point. Each single disc would cost about $9 with about 30 minutes of content, and each three disc pack cost about $17. Of course, DVD players would be the best option for on the go play, but they were way more expensive and this was at a time where people were still transitioning to DVD players. The video now, of course, also didn't have a light built in, so your best option was this attachable headlight, which actually works pretty well. But ideally, there'd be an upgrade. The Video Now Color and XP were eventually released, which came with exclusive color content discs. The color sported a higher resolution at 216 by 160, and the XP could access DVD-style menu games. The last model release was the Color FX, which was essentially a line of color video now with that sick transparent plastic aesthetic. While the color player's higher resolution and lit screen definitely makes it easier to see, including the black and white discs, it's still a hugely flawed portable player. The black and white player had a horrendously horrible viewing angle, but the color player has a horrendous viewing angle. As long as you're holding it at the perfect angle towards your eyes, you can see the screen, but make any adjustment or tap the surface it's sitting on and the disc will skip. Now the kind of disc featured in the video now was a small CD called a PVD, and you could even get Media Wizard software which let you edit and burn your own PVD discs to play in a video now. It's actually kind of neat. For the time, it definitely had merit, and looking back, it's it's kind of quirky and cute. While the video now ended with the color FX, Tiger and Hasbro actually continued the now brand a few years later with TV now. Now, I wanted to order a TV now. It's essentially a personal handheld DVR player from 2007 to cover in this video, but I didn't really remember it existed until a few days ago, so I ordered it and it's not gonna get here on time. I also ordered some weird Simpsons hit clips that aren't gonna get here on time, so I'm gonna do a supplemental video on my social media, and those links are in the description down below. I'll have it up within a week or two. Also, while I have you, before we get to the last media player, let me ask you the comment question. Did you have any of these players growing up? Did you even know they existed? If so, what was your experience with them? Also, I tried to make this video super comprehensive, but I sure I missed a few things here and there. So if I miss any media players that you want me to talk about maybe in the future, just comment down below. Also, while I have you there, please leave this video a like, it really helps. Now, while all of these players have a special place in my heart, this final one, is kind of a special hell child completely void of nostalgic memories or quirky charm like the video now. Here we have the juice box. The juice box was marketed as the cooler video now. Relying heavily on its inclusion of music videos and Cartoon Network, released in 2004, the juice box was certainly sleeker than the video now, but it lacked a cool variety of media and entered a pretty crowded market, with the video now and Game Boy Advance video already having an established base. There were music videos, van skate videos, X Games, and it was even advertised on MTV. Neat? <laughs> Furthermore, while the juice box technically had better resolution at 240 by 160 than the Video Now discs, the cartridge it used had much less storage than the Video Now, so the video had to be super, super compressed. Oftentimes, content would only run at six frames per second, and with the emphasis on live action, it was much more noticeable than things like the Game Boy Advance video or the Video Now. Now, the machine itself feels nice in my hands, but the rubber texture picks up dust really easily. It's kind of sticky, and for the longest time, I thought my only video cartridge was broken. Now, the power button on the juice box has a locking mechanism on it, so it'll only turn on if there's a cartridge inside. 
The demo cartridge doesn't actually have a chip in it, it just unlocks the power button so you can play the demo video built into the system memory. To get my Yu-Gi-Oh cartridge to work, I had to jam it in with ungodly force to get it to play. It's pretty obvious why this didn't take off. And while I think the juice box is a kind of a cute name, if you're going for an edgy young teen slash preteen crowd, you really don't want to name a device after something that's seen as very juvenile. They should have called it the PBR box. Like the video now, this has a media wizard which let you load MP3s on the device. But the iPod Shuffle, the first budget iPod, was out two months later. Looking back on all of these devices, it's not a mystery as to why they all faded into obscurity. Better things just came along. I mean, with the growth of MP3 players, the iPod, iPhones, smartphones, tablets, we don't really need this kind of stuff anymore. However, as technology grows, we do kind of lose the charm of some of these things. I mean, modern tablets and phones don't even have an auxiliary cable on them, which means it's becoming harder and harder to listen to the iDog. Anyways, if this is your first video of mine, please consider subscribing or checking out some of my other videos. You can also follow me on social media. Those links are in the description down below. Other than that, have a good day, and I will see you next week.